Hey guys. So there's only one assignment this week. You guys are going to experiment with some colored pencil techniques. All right, so gather a couple things. You'll need a piece of paper. Any size will work. And you'll need some colored pencils, just the standard set. So like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. You don't need to get any of the the light greens or light purples or dark greens, just the standard set will be fine. But if you have extra color pencils in different shades, that would also be great. All right, so for this assignment, I'm going to go over some colored pencil techniques. I'm gonna talk a little bit about pressure control um, and overlapping and blending. And then you're gonna be doing three circles, tracing three circles on your paper and in each of those circles, you're going to demonstrate one type of color theory. So we're going to do one demonstration of monochromatic, so dark to light, one demonstration of warm and cool colors, trying to blend them and overlap them properly, and then one circle with cool colors. All right, so let's get ready. All right, here we go. I'm trying to make sure the light is right on here. See this. All right, so first thing, it's good to gather some uh, materials for coloring and some materials for tracing. So I went around my house and I found a couple of things that I can use to trace a circle. So you might not wanna go too big because then you're gonna have trouble um, tracing or I'm sorry, like coloring everything in if the circle's too big. So I got a couple things gathered. I think I'm gonna go with this size. It's just a can size. Um, so start by tracing three circles onto your paper. I'm just gonna trace right here. I'm gonna trace lightly with pencil. Here's my circles. Sorry, my lighting's not that great. Okay, and then in one circle, you're going to do the monochromatic scale. Um, so this is a little different with color pencils because we're just doing a shading, uh, we're just doing a value scale. Okay, so it's gonna look like this. I'm going to start by doing the outer edge that with the darkest value. So I'm just going to use one color pencil for this. Green, blue, purple, red. That would all work really well for this one. So with color pencils, it's really, really a good thing to practice pressure control. So what I mean by that is um, practicing pressing really, really hard on your color pencil and practicing pressing really, really light and soft on your pencil. So I've got the outline complete. Now I've got to try to make this thing fade to get lighter. So that is going to look like this one here, this top one. So it's gonna go from dark to light. All right, so let's get started. I'm just going to slowly, oh, I keep getting the wrong one. I'm gonna just slowly transition my pressure control. So I'm just gonna go a little bit lighter as I go into the middle. Make sure you're coloring on a smooth surface. So if you're coloring on a bumpy surface, you're going to pick up some of those textures on the bumpy surface. So Now, as I start to get into the center, I want to ease up on my pressure control because I want this circle to gradually fade from light to dark. So I'm just going to like loosen up my hand 
with the control So it's a lot of, it's a little bit of overlapping over what you already did. I want the middle to be the lightest area. So this is how I can demonstrate a monochromatic scale. You know, in painting, we'd have to mix white and black in there. But with color pencils, it's just about applying pressure to make something look lighter or darker. So I want you guys to demonstrate that technique just using one color. So one circle like that. My hand's starting to kind of hurt, but that's okay because I want my project to look good. And then the other two, we're gonna do one with warm colors and one with cool colors. Okay, so I'm gonna get my warm colors together so we know that the warm colors are red, orange, yellow. So I'm gonna try to make my circle for this one look something like this one right here. So I started with the red and then I shifted to orange and then I shifted to yellow. All right, so let's get started with that. So I'm gonna start with my red all around the outside of the circle. And I'm gonna start pressing very hard at the start of this. And then I'm gonna slowly, gradually get a little bit lighter with my pressure control. Because I want this circle to look like it's fading from red to orange to yellow. I'm gradually loosening up my hand a little bit. To me, this circle's just really, really outlined. So I'm gonna try to darken up some of my values so it looks like it's really transitioning from dark to light. So slowly. It's really nice when you're blending to get your pencil point, your tip of your color pencil to a blunt point. See how it's like not totally sharpened? Okay, and if you're coloring like straight up and down, you're gonna get a really sharp point. You want the point to be kind of blunt, not so sharpened so you can get some nice um, pressure control. So you can clearly see that these mark making techniques were done with a sharp pencil and these ones were done with a blunt um, pencil point. Okay. I think that transition looks a lot better. So you really can't go wrong with just kind of overlapping gradually as you go. And notice how my mark making and my coloring is kind of going in all different directions. I'm like using a scumbling technique, which is just like when you're filling in something with just kind of going in lots of different directions like this. All right, now I'm ready to transition to a new color. So I'm gonna start with orange. So I'm gonna start off kind of light and then just gradually go darker. And this color scheme is also, it's a warm color scheme, but it also could be analogous because re remember analogous are any three colors next to each other on the color wheel. Color pencil is kind of difficult to erase, but it is possible. So if you are getting a little bit too dark as you go in the center, just do a little bit of erasing. It'll leave a little bit of residue from what you just colored, but you can get it to be a little lighter. All right, so there we go. I've got red and orange. Now I gotta add yellow. Just a little bit of yellow in the middle. So go around my orange one more time.
just touch up my red a little bit more. We're going to be working with line and shape and color in our next assignment. So it's a good thing to get used to doing some of these techniques now. Okay. Last and final one, we're gonna do the cool colors. And then I'm gonna show you one extra little trick with blending. So the cool colors are purple, blue, and green. And I'm definitely gonna need to go in this order. So we're gonna do, okay, here we go. I'm gonna do the purple first. Purple, then blue, then green, because that's how they look on the color wheel. And I actually have a little picture up here on my screen, but it's way too bright so you can't really see it. But I do have, I'm, I'm referencing a color wheel right here so I can see what my warm and cool colors are. I know my lighting is kind of messed up with this video, but. All right, here we go with the cool colors. So I'm going to start with my purple. Same thing I did with the red. So I'm going to outline. And then start to slowly build up the value, making it look like it's transitioning. Everyone's got like a slightly different style when they're doing this too. So if you tend to color a little bit lighter, that's okay. I'm starting to ease up on my pressure control. Sorry, this lighting is very bad. There's the purple and I'm gonna transition into my blue. And your blues and purples might be a little bit different than mine and that's okay. So I'm just overlapping some of that light area of the purple, overlapping that with blue. I'm going a little darker on top of this transitional part. And that looks really, really pretty. Here's my purple to blue. And then last, I just have to go with my green. So I'm just slightly overlapping over top of the blue just a little bit because purple and green don't go that great together. So make sure you're not overlapping too much on the purple with your green. Okay, last little trick. Try to hold it up here. Last little trick I know is blending with white, but you have to be careful because it's gonna make your colors look like a pastel color. I'm going to demonstrate that on, um, I think I'll demonstrate that on my monochromatic one. So if you have white, if you don't have white, don't worry about doing this step, but it is good to practice. Try doing some white on one of your circles and you'll see that the white actually is really helping my colors blend and fade a little bit easier. This is just a technique. I actually, if I'm doing something with color pencil, I, I like to just have the colors transition naturally. I don't, I don't really always use white, but I'm just telling you that it is an option.
And the whole point about doing this color theory activity is just so you know which colors look good together and which colors don't. So if you're still having questions about that, it might be a really good idea to go back and just test out some colors and test out some overlapping. Remember we learned in one of the other classes that complementary colors just don't really go together. So let me try to do some complementary color overlapping. So if I did some purple and yellow overlapping, you're gonna see kind of like a brown color. If I did some red and green overlapping, you'll, you'll get the same kind of effect especially with painting, but let's just try it out with color pencil just to see. So yeah, again, not the best looking color, unless you were trying to go with a shadow look. So this color doesn't look that great. And then finally, last complementary color set, we have blue and orange, so give that a try. See what blue and orange look like. If we overlap them, and again, I mean, it almost kind of looks like a weird green color, but it is not that great looking. It definitely just muddies it up a little bit and doesn't look very, um, it, it looks like you didn't mean to do those two colors together. Like So in, in blending, don't overlap complementary. Also for this project. I have my little practice paper here. Um, it's a really good idea not to show um, the lines where you're trying to blend. So like if I'm doing my purple, blue, green, a lot of times I see kids, students just doing the same coloring pressure the whole time. So here's my purple color pressure. It's just, there's no, really, there's not a range here of value. I did not, I colored pretty much the entire circle the whole, the same way. And then I'll see people do the blue like that too and they're just not really overlapping and it just kind of looks like a striped circle. So that's not the point of what this assignment is. It's to try to make the colors look like they're gradually fading from one color to the next. And please, whatever you do, do not outline like this. That looks really bad. I see this, people do that a lot. And they try to outline and say, okay, this is the part that's supposed to be blue. And then this is the part that's supposed to be green. I think that looks really, really bad. We've made, it just doesn't look like it's really gradually blending. So that's the don'ts. You want your circles to look like they're gradually fading. So this is what you're looking for. This is what not to do. Okay. So. What's due is three circles, one monochromatic, one warm and cool, one, I'm sorry, one warm color, one cool color. So those three things are due this week. All right, happy coloring.